This video will explain in detail how to troubleshoot a Honda VFR electrical problem and I'll go through the har wiring harness and all the uh, connectors. First of all is your battery compartment. Uh, your battery compartment is probably where 9 out of 10 electrical problems will exist. These connectors right here should be crystal clean or very clean. If they're not and if they show any corrosion, uh, you're in trouble because you will not get continuity on these connectors. Now if you can see right here, there's lime deposits. Those lime deposits are actually corrosion from battery acid. Baking soda will neutralize it. CLR will also go in there and neutralize some of it. The best way to remedy this is just to take a little Dremel or a rotary tool with a sanding stone or a wire brush and just clean it out. In which case I used a sanding stone and some sandpaper. On your connectors here, uh, that screw right there, I used, uh, I just grabbed anything and used it and therefore you have a loose connector to the battery. So one of the first things you want to check is your connection to the battery. If the connection to the battery or the bolt is loose, you will not get continuity. Also, it will rattle loose and the minute that you hit a bump, this little connector and the bolt will pop up and you will lose connection and power. That will shut off the bike. That will <laughs> that will give you a scare. Also, this starter relay, this is my fourth starter relay on that bike. Um, aftermarket starter relays are pretty good. Some of them are for the VFR. Other people claim that uh, they have heavy duty sets. Don't listen to them. This right here is designed to have a heat shield all around it. If you do not get a starter relay that fits into that heat shield, your starter relay will die. It will fall, it will melt. In this case, this is my fourth one. I went back to an OEM and I've never had any problems since. But I went through four of them. Some of them were less than seven dollars. Some of them were fifty dollars. Uh, some of them that were fifty dollars only cost eight dollars online. So, um, bottom line is that uh, you know, you don't want to play with the heat shielding on your starter relay. If you play with the heat shield on your starter relay or if you let corrosion invade the connectors or alter the connectors, you will have problem because over time the rattle of the engine, the vibration of the engine and the bumps that you hit will cause a, a disconnect or a break in the system and momentary uh, stall. All right. From the starter re from the battery, it goes into your starter relay. I've already marked in and out. If you do the in and out, you can uh, you can pretty much it's just the hot wire going in here. Um, I've measured everything and I've documented everything because I'm troubleshooting. I'm troubleshooting the the electrical in here. It was very simple. Um, the sim the simplicity of the problem is that the connectors uh, were corroded, and therefore I got irregular uh, measurements in various points. In other words, um, one of my first measuring point is the fuse block. To do the fuse block, the simplest way is to use a pen LED con uh, tester, in which case you clip the alligator clip on the frame here, and you just touch the pins, and the LED will light up if there's 12 volts. You can go through in probably five seconds. All right. The next thing is I tested from the fuse block to the wiring harness. Each one of these wires has a ground and a hot. Now the relays, um, there's no easy way to test the relays. The most simple way is just to get another bike. Now if you take these relays on a working bike and plug it in, you'll know if they're working. In this case, all the relays were working. The turn signal relays are working all the headlights are working. Now the wiring harness is pretty simple and here's how they go. This is the wiring harness. There are approximately one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight connectors. 
with another one on the instrument cluster. The first two is pretty simple. Black goes to black, clear goes to clear. The third one is your auxiliary and if you can tell here somebody, the previous owner, because I built this from scratch and um, I had to buy the instrument cluster and, 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 and everything. They've cut some wires and they've done some alterations on the wiring harness. This third connector is called the auxiliary or the clock. It is not in use. So this cut wire, these two cut wires, have no interplay on the schematic or the wiring of the bike itself. The fourth connector is the ignition. And if you can tell right here, this goes to the key. This goes in there and it sits into that pod right there if you can see that. You just connect it. One thing I've noticed, and you may be weary about this, if you take your bike to any shop for a repair and you begin to see things breaking or tabs breaking, your fairing tabs, your screws missing, or any of those anomalies, be weary because eventually your harness and wiring connectors, if not handled with gently and with care, will begin to rattle off. What I mean is that these connectors will lose continuity or they won't stay put. I've had it happen on that one right there. This right here, the ignition harness, has to be taped. And if you hit a bump, it will come loose. And coming loose will stall the bike. And when you're going down the highway, at 80 miles per hour and your bike stalls it's not a good feeling or when you uh, you know can't start it at the shopping center it's not a good feeling it happened to me I went through I found out that the harness was disconnected or even though you push it in the harness lost continuity so be very weary about the ignition or the fourth wiring harness any disconnect there will cause the bike not to start and the bike will be dead indicating starter relay problem. The next connector which is the fifth connector and the sixth connector go to the turn signals and the headlight. The last three here are what I was measuring. I went and measured every point on here. Green is ground measure your continuity to ground. The other ones, um, I just compared the two bikes. But that's the easiest way to measure this. The only other way to measure it is to get an exact schematic of what reading these wires should be when it's hot. All right. Now, as far as your headlights, I didn't have headlights. I didn't have power on here and I didn't know if it was a signal relay, uh, turn si the headlight relay, or somebody had cut the wire. So what I did was I checked continuity, green is ground, green to the chassis, it was dead. Now that told me something. So it took a while before I realized that the negative plug in the starter relay was not, was not getting, there was no continuity due to the corrosion. So in other words, my ground was dead at the starter relay. Next is the white wire. The white wire is the low beam. You should be having 12 volts on there. Measure it to your fuse box. If there's continuity in each of these wires to your fuse block, then it's good. That pretty much concludes the wiring harness and the turn signal. Now the turn signals here, there are three wires. Green is ground, orange and white is your running lights. You should have a 12 on there when it's hot and the orange on the end is your turn signal. It will flash when your turn signal relays begin to flash it. That concludes the wiring harness and the running lights. The same goes for the back. Um, but that should give you an indicator of how to measure these things. and. You may want to take a piece of paper, write everything down, but it all starts at the signal relay, and to make it real simple, it's your signal relay. Check everything and the corrosion on there. Um, 
it was a headache. It took me almost a week to figure out what was going on. And I got irregular or various measurements due to the corrosion, uh, the corrosion problem.